All right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. And yeah, yeah, I know it's been a while. Ah, it's been a couple of rough weeks of work, you know, between the um, Guadalajara Film Festival and the a workshop for education that I, that I attended for Epic. It's been a couple of weeks, you know, full of works that I, I haven't been able to create content. But a uh, promise is a promise, so I'm going to show you the magic behind the walking metahuman in editor. All right, and let me explain a little bit why I think this is magic. All right, so there are two states in your editor. One is in editor, and that is what we are seeing right here. Okay. And then there is the playing editor, right? And that is what you see right here, right? Where you can have, you know, cameras and you can do, you know, a bunch of stuff, right? Um, as gameplay, all right? And that is a uh, complete different. But one of the limitations that we do have in editor is that your blueprints, right? Any blueprint, right? If you create right now any um, empty actor like this one, right? And let's call it, I don't know, nothing for now. So if you open it up, you're going to see that you have the construction script and you have your event graph, right? The construction script is whatever is going to be able to run in editor and the event graph is whatever is going to run at gameplay, right? At Pi, what is called playing editor. Um, but it's only here in the event graph where we have a tick and a tick is an event that is going to run every cycle, every frame of your gameplay, all right? And this is what we use to move things around, to rotate, to, um, you know, to listen to events and to do a lot of things, you know, this tick right here. But this one is not available in the construction script. So how are we going to hack that? Because this is more of a hack than anything, all right? So I'm going to delete this um, empty blueprint and let's start the magic. So this is how it's done. It's a couple of steps. It's very easy. You can follow along. So this is what we're going to do. First thing we need is a very special type of blueprint that is called a blueprint interface. This blueprint interface is what you use to connect and communicate between blueprints, all right? So we're going to create a new one and we are going to call it blueprint interface bi underscore uh, editor tick. All right. The name is really not important. What is important is what it's inside it. So we're going to double click on it and this is it. So it is very weird. It's like a read only new function there and there is nothing much that you can do inside here but create inputs and outputs. And this is because this is really something that you call from other blueprints. So there should be no functionality inside here. But what would happen if we take the name of this new function here and we change it to, and this is very important, this should be exactly the same name. It should be editor tick. This is important, right? Not the name of the, of the, of the blueprint itself, of the interface, but the name of this function. It should be editor take one world capitalization as you see it here. You hit enter and now you see that this function is now is no called you know editor tick. And the second best thing is to set on call in editor. That this means that you're going to be able to use it as a function and also as an event. And that is the interesting part. So let's go and let's go compile. Let's go save. We can turn this off for now and we're going to create a new blueprint class. And this case is going to be, you know, an actor class. And we call, we, we're going to call it BP Rotate Cube. That's it. That's the only thing this thing is going to do. All right. So let's create it. Let's create a cube. All right. That's it. Now I have a cube. And now we need to do two things. The first thing is to um, call this interface inside our blueprint. And that is done by going to the class settings. 
And on the right, you're going to see on the details, the interface implemented interface. There is right now no interface being uh, implemented. So all you need to do is click add and then you search for BI editor tick. So this is going to be the name of the actual uh, interface, all right? And now in the interface, you're going to have here the name of the function or the different functions that are going to be inside your uh, interface. We just have this one, you know, the editor tick one, and this is going to be enough. Now, what are we going to do with it? So now we are going to be able to go to the event graph and we can get rid of all these because we're not going to use any of these. We're going to use this editor tick as an event. And the easiest way to get it right here on your node editor is to double click on it. And there it is. Now we have an event that is called ed editor tick, all right? But this is not going to work as it is because we need to do one more step in the construction script. And that is a function that is called set timer by, and in this case, we're going to use this one that is called function name, all right? That's it. Now we need to call this editor tick here in the function name, all right? So it's editor tick. And we need to give it a little bit of a time, all right? It, this cannot be zero time. We need to give it a very short time because if you set it a, a, like a second, it's going to be move or everything that you move, it's going to be like tick, 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 like very, very steppy. So if you want it to be a natural uh, move, you need to go very low, all right? So let's go 0 0.01, all right? So it's 0 0.01. Uh, seconds, this thing is going to run, right? And this is the magic. Now, this means that this in the event graph is going to be running things on the construction script. So this is like calling this function, right? And this function is, uh, we can call it as a, um, as an event, right? So whatever we set in this event is going to happen in the construction script. It's weird, I know, but you know, let's add our cube and let's add rotation. No, maybe not world rotation, rotation, add rotation, add local rotation. This one should be good. Now we can connect this here, right? And let's set this to a very low, maybe 0.1 in Z. Let's save, let's compile, let's go out. Let's bring this cube in and let's save everything. And uh, it is not working. So, oh, sorry, we need to set it to loop. Now we compile and ta-da, there it is. This is madness. Having this working in the construction script is simply madness, all right? All right, this is cool, I know because this is going to allow you to do animation in editor, meaning that you don't have to, if you lack, you know, imagination of seeing, you know, how things are going to move uh, in your scene, this is very good. For example, that's how I, you know, grab this guy and I, if I set him, you know, back there and I go down here, I uh, turn on walking, he is going to start walking. But is he really walking? No, nope. he has an animation of him walking. And then by doing exactly this, instead of adding a rotation, adding, you know, a translation or a change in the location. And it happens to be, you know, um, I'm going to show you how I did it. So, you know, I'm going to stop this guy from walking. Then I'm going to put him back. Let's open him up by control E. That means, you know, edit. That is going to open up the blueprint here and let me show you how I did it. So I did the same thing. So the first thing, uh, do you know this part? This is the part where I load up, you know, the different idols. And this is very good. This is what, you know, it's making every time I drag him to the, um, to the editor, he should be. I don't know why he's not doing it right now. Maybe let's give it. A little bit of a kick with the randomize that's it and 
All right, again, will you? All right, there, there she is. Right. This is what we did, you know, last time. This is um, having our metahumans be, you know, acting, you know, with the face and with the body without hidden play, you know, in editor. This is done by this part down here. Is this very easy? So we use a select, we load up a bunch of animations, and then we simply set that animation on our um, skeletal mesh component, right? This one right here. Now, all I did now was to add a branch. And that branch is, is if it is walking, and I set this instance set editable so you can change on the fly right here, outside here, if this um, metahuman crowd should be walking or not. And then, because I just want this to be loaded once, all right, I load up the animation, the same as I did here, but now I just, you know, set only one animation. Like, you can go and try to check different animations, so you can have different style of walking, depending uh, in a random base, but, you know, this should, this should do it. And also, of course, I added this, and this is exactly what we did before, all right? We call the editor, um, the editor tick, and because I have it right here implemented somewhere, yeah, it's somewhere around here, okay. And um, lastly, because I want, I don't want the metahuman to walk and walk and walk and walk into the distance and never come back. I want it to loop. I recorded the original, you know, actor position. Right, so this is run once every time you move this um, var that doesn't have a name. Uh, that should be original location, maybe that should be a good name. Um, then it's going to record how whatever this metahuman is. Now, that is in the construction script in the event graph. All I did was exactly the same. So we have a branch. And we do have, you know, the event take uh, the event from the function, the implemented function. So as you see, this is running constantly, and it's asking, all right, is this metahuman walking? And if it is walking, I'm simply adding a local transform, and I'm adding a little bit of a Y movement, and I play with this with this value until I saw that the metahuman was not sleeping. Um, sleeping, I mean, not sleeping like, you know his feet sleeping, you know, on the ground, right? So then, because I don't want him to be walking, 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 I set a distance, and this distance, every time this tick works, is going to add one more to distance, and when the distance get to this max distance, that I do have it right now in, in a thousand units, it's going to simply get that original location, and it's going to set the metahuman back, and it's going to reset, you know, the distance. That's it. Now, if you want it to randomize every time he goes back to the original position, you can turn on this. So I'm going to show you how it works with and without, um, and you know what it um, um, conveys, right? Because it's going to maybe take a little bit of your processing power every time it needs to randomize. So right now, if I hit walk in, that is exactly what she's going to do. She's going to walk a hundred, a thousand units, and then she's going to disappear and reappear right here. All right? This is um, what we just did. And it is doing it without hitting play. So now you can have your scene live, you know, of where things move in, with things animating. So you're not, if you lack a little bit of creativity in your mind, how things should be, this is uh, I suffer from the same thing, so I need to have things working in editor and don't worry, you know, about playtime because at playing time, this is going to work the same. She's going to sleep a little bit at first, but the second time around, I promise you, it's, it's going to run fine. Um, all right. So, um, that's it. All right. Um, I hope that I could make more videos like this. Uh, you know, don't don't forsake me. I know that I'm a, a little bit lazy and a little bit, you know, to overwork sometimes to make these kind of videos. I just hope, you know, that this is informative and that you learn a little bit. Uh, so thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. And um, 
do you know the drill? Um, be good. Love you all. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.